There are different types of sewer systems in Canada, and in Hamilton we have two kinds, separated and combined sewer systems. Separated sewer systems, like the name suggests, have two separate sewer pipes, one for sewage and one for stormwater. The pipe that carries the sewage, or wastewater, is called a sanitary sewer. The sanitary sewer collects wastewater from homes and businesses and takes it to the city's wastewater treatment plant, where it is cleaned and then released into Hamilton Harbor. In a separated sewer system, a second pipe collects and carries stormwater. It's called the storm sewer. Rainwater and melted snow enter outdoor drains such as downspouts and catch basins, which are connected to the storm sewer. The stormwater may be conveyed to a stormwater facility or released directly into the environment. In older parts of Hamilton, such as the Lower City and on the mountain north of Mohawk Road, just like many older cities across Canada, we have combined sewers. Combined sewer systems have one pipe that collects both the wastewater from our homes and businesses and stormwater from rain or melted snow. Building combined sewers was the accepted building practice for over 100 years, with most older major cities like Toronto, Ottawa, Kingston, Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, and Windsor all having large combined sewer systems. Combined sewers function the same as sanitary sewers in that they convey the wastewater they collect to our wastewater treatment plant where it is cleaned and released into Hamilton Harbor. One of the main differences between separated sewers and combined sewers is most visible during heavy rainfall. In cases with a lot of rain or melting snow, the additional volume of water in the combined sewers can exceed the capacity of the system. In an effort to protect the environment and add capacity to the sewer system, from the 1980s through to 2015, Hamilton City Council invested in improvements to the system, including real-time control and constructed nine large storage tanks in strategic locations across the city. These tanks, called Combined Sewage Overflow, or CSO tanks, hold excess water during heavy rainfall or melting snow. During significant wet weather events, the tanks will fill and store up to 314 million liters of combined sewage. The tanks have been instrumental in the city's ability to reduce the amount of untreated wastewater entering the environment and are critical pieces of our wastewater infrastructure. CSO tanks, much like a lot of the water infrastructure in Hamilton, are monitored remotely by computers, sensors, and gauges that are part of a complex system called SCADA. More than 130 water and wastewater facilities with thousands of moving parts are monitored remotely by staff working in the control room at the Woodward Wastewater Treatment Plant. With limited field staff, the city relies heavily on technology to ensure operations at our CSO tanks and other water wastewater infrastructure are running as they should. This is an example of a combined sewer overflow tank. This is the main King CSO tank which has the capacity to hold 77,000 cubic meters or 77 million liters of stormwater and sanitary sewage or combined sewage. It's the city's largest CSO tank and can hold more than twice the amount of wastewater than the average sized tank in Hamilton. Deep underground, this CSO tank is a hazardous environment with confined spaces that reach down 17.6 meters. That's the equivalent of more than five school buses stacked on top of each other. This CSO tank is made up of a series of storage cells with very tall columns, chambers, gates, sensors, and pumps. During wet weather, the structure is fed with wastewater from three sewer pipes. Let's take a closer look at how the flow of wastewater moves through the CSO tank. To do this, we must look at three scenarios. Dry weather, wet weather, and severe wet weather conditions. On a typical dry weather day, the Woodward Wastewater Treatment Plant cleans the daily flow of wastewater from across the city. During dry weather conditions, most CSO tanks would sit empty and not be operating. The main king tank is a bit different. It has a role during dry weather too. Since wastewater travels to the treatment plant via gravity, sometimes it needs to be lifted to a higher elevation in order to get there successfully. The Main King CSO tank also acts as a lift station. On dry weather days, wastewater travels into it through two sewer pipes and is then pumped to a higher elevation. It then continues travel down to the Woodward Wastewater Treatment Plant for cleaning. If there is a lot of rain or melting snow, the CSO tanks are activated and begin to function as large storage tanks for excess combined sewage when there is too much for the treatment plant to handle. Huge sliding gates move to allow combined sewage to flow into the CSO tank for holding. In this scenario, the tank is made up of two extremely large holding cells. Gravity feeds the combined sewage into the first of two cells until it is full, 
If the storm event continues, a second cell is available. The combined sewage is held in this tank until the wet weather has stopped and the treatment plant has the capacity to treat the wastewater. At this point, the gate positions change to allow the wastewater to be pumped out to the treatment plant for cleaning. Once the cells have drained, the tank will go back to working as a lift station, like on a regular dry weather day. In the event of a significant rainfall or rapid snowmelt, a severe wet weather scenario may occur. In this case, the flow of combined sewage could be so intense that it fills both the first and second storage cells quickly. If the rain continues and neither the treatment plant nor the CSO tank can handle the flow of additional combined sewage, there is no other alternative but to send the wastewater into the tank's overflow channel, triggering the overflow sensor and then flowing down into the overflow sewer and into the environment. When there is severe wet weather and both cells in the main King CSO tank are full, it overflows into Shadow Creek. During significant rainfall or rapid snowmelt, this tank will continue to overflow until the severe wet weather stops. Once the wet weather has stopped and the treatment plant has the capacity to treat the combined sewage, the gate positions change to allow the wastewater to be pumped out to the treatment plant for cleaning. Before the tank goes back to working as a lift station, like on a regular dry weather day, it will complete a wash cycle. Whenever the storage cells are used and drained, a wash cycle takes place to move any sediment, unflushable and floatable materials that are caught in the CSO tank. The debris is collected and sent to the treatment plant for cleaning. This is a great reminder to only flush the three P's, pee, poo, and toilet paper, as the unflushable and floatable materials impact the function of sewer pipes, harm wastewater pumps, and pose negative impacts to the environment when an overflow occurs. If the combined sewer system didn't have the designed overflow option to release wastewater into the harbor, large areas of Hamilton would likely experience flooding, which would impact homes, businesses, roadways, public spaces, and infrastructure. In July 2018, the City of Hamilton informed the public that we had discovered that the Main King CSO tank was discharging untreated wastewater into Shed Oak Creek. At the time of this public notification, the duration and volume of the spill were unknown. We immediately stopped the discharge and began cleanup activities in the area. Since discovering the spill in July 2018, we have been working with the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks to investigate the incident. As this investigation was ongoing, the city had not previously shared detailed information about the spill. However, this video includes a brief summary of what staff currently believe are the circumstances that led to the discharge. Investigations have determined that the spill was a result of two separate malfunctions at the main King CSO tank. First, a station bypass gate in the tank that should have been in the closed position appears to have been manually opened to approximately 5% on January 28, 2014. An error in computer programming showed this as normal operation and, as such, this error remained undetected until July 2018. This gate is approximately 14.5 meters below ground. Its purpose is to isolate wastewater flow in order for the tank to be taken offline to perform major repairs. The gate itself sits 1.4 meters above the bottom of the channel where wastewater enters the main King CSO tank. Wastewater flow would have generally stayed below the open gate. However, at times wastewater passed through the partially open gate and out into the creek. Despite extensive investigations, the city has not been able to determine why the gate had been opened in January 2014. A second gate that should have remained in the open position during normal operation experienced a mechanical failure in January 2018. This was also discovered by the city in July 2018. The sensor on this piece of equipment did not detect the mechanical failure and was reporting normal operation. This gate moves vertically up and down on a stem and the sensor for it is attached to the mechanism that raises it up and down. As a result of the mechanical failure, the gate became separated from the stem and remained in the closed position. However, since the mechanism with the sensor was still moving, it was reporting normal operation. This second failure allowed significantly more wastewater into Shadow Creek, creating odors and reports of visual floatables in the creek. As part of the investigation, the city has completed computer modeling exercises to estimate the amount of wastewater that was released into the creek. It was estimated that approximately 24 billion liters of stormwater and sanitary sewage was discharged over the course of four and a half years. Unfortunately, our investigation to date has not been able to pinpoint the cause of the malfunction with certainty. However, we are taking steps to ensure we are able to reduce the risk of spills like this from happening again by reviewing our procedures and improving on-site inspections of our CSO and other water wastewater facilities. 
As stewards of the environment, we take spills very seriously and are committed to protecting our natural resources. At this time, the City is continuing to work with the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks in their investigation. There is no evidence of any human health effects identified as resulting from this spill. The City discovered the source of the spill on July 18, 2018. There was no knowledge of the spill at any time prior to July 2018. Within only a few weeks of locating and stopping the discharge, Water quality sampling results showed a substantial improvement in water quality conditions associated with a dramatic decrease in E. coli to pre-spill levels. For many years, Public Health Services continues to recommend against using the watercourses linked to Shadoak Creek for primary contact recreational water activities, such as swimming or wading, or secondary contact recreational water activities, such as canoeing or fishing. As such, signs warning against any contact with those waterways are expected to remain in place indefinitely. The spill had no impact on the drinking water supply in Hamilton, as Lake Ontario is the source of our drinking water. In response to the discharge, the City has taken a number of actions toward addressing the impacts of the spill. These include Immediately reporting the spill to the MECP Spills Action Centre. Immediately informing the public that it had discovered the spill. Locating the source of the spill and immediately stopping it. Undertaking cleanup of the creek including removing 242,000 litres of floatable material from the surface and edge of the creek. Initiating regular monitoring of the water quality in impacted areas of Shadoak Creek. Initiating and completing enhanced inspections of wastewater facilities and equipment. Undertaking studies through experts to determine what kind of further remediation is appropriate for Shadoak Creek. As well, in an effort to reduce the risk of an event like this happening again in the future, as part of the 2020 Water, Wastewater and Stormwater Budget, Council approved the addition of four new staff to improve the routine physical inspection and preventative maintenance programs for water infrastructure, including CSO tanks. Council also approved the addition of one new staff member to sample and analyze water and wastewater quality in Hamilton. For more information about the spill into Shadoak Creek, including frequently asked questions, publicly available consultant reports, and a chronology of events, please visit www.hamilton.ca slash Creek. <laughs>